You know who's an awesome superhero? The Flash! Oh my god, how have I not covered this guy yet? I would argue that he's probably the third most important superhero in DC Comics. No question that Batman and Superman are up there. And Wonder Woman's a very important character, but in terms of all the big events that drive the stories within DC Comics, The Flash is always there, and he always has a key part to play. He has a key part to play in comics history, because when DC Comics decided to create a new version of The Flash, the Barry Allen version that we know pretty well thanks to the TV show now, instead of Jay Garrick, it introduced the very concept of a legacy character. And that's been a huge thematic element ever since. But how do I choose which era of The Flash to cover? There's so many important ones. You've got, you know, the original Golden Age Flash, the Silver Age Flash. You've got the stuff that he did in the 80s in Crisis on Infinite Earths. You've got the Mark Wade run. You've got Flashpoint. You've got New 52. Now you've got Rebirth. There's all these really important runs. I think the best way to decide which comic I'm going to read is to take a Flash quiz. I've got one minute to answer as many correct as possible, and that will determine which era I will review. Let's get to it. What is the real name of the villain in the yellow suit? Eobard Thawne. What is Barry Allen's full name? Um, Bar Bartholomew Henry Allen. What was Barry Allen's first appearance? Pass. Who are the creators of Barry Allen? Pass. Who is the curator of the Flash Museum? Oh, something Miles. Um, um, Dexter Miles? Yes. What does the cosmic treadmill allow Flash to do? Uh, he can travel in time on it. Who is Daphne Dean? Um, Barry Allen's girlfriend uh, in high school. Who are the creators of Wally West? Carmine Infantino and John Broom. Who are the creators of Jay Garrick? Pass. How many did I get right? Oh, so you got six correct. I got six correct? Let me okay. Make sure. Let me make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. Six. So I am going to cover the Mark Wade run of Flash. Let's do it. Obviously, I'm excited to cover The Flash right now because the TV show is coming back, and I really enjoy the CW TV show. It's, it's very good. Not perfect all the time, but some of the episodes are absolutely fantastic. They've truly embraced the mythology. And beyond that, The Flash is the first comic book that I at least remember owning. I don't know whether my parents got it for me on a trip or if I had, like, some spare change. I mean, we're talking, like, really, really young. This was the first issue of The Flash that I ever read. First comic book I remember reading. It was so surreal. It was some sort of Gorilla Grodd story. And I just remember being blown away by the art and the excitement and all these references to past adventures and characters. And it really excited me about comic books in general. But I'm excited specifically to cover the Mark Wade run because I don't know it that well. I've read a few of the comics and currently I'm in the process of sort of starting from the beginning and, and learning about his run. But it's such a critically acclaimed, lengthy, well-respected run that it's just great to be able to cover something like that, something that's good comics. Uh, I think that what Mark Way did in terms of adding to the mythology of The Flash is, is mind-blowing. I mean, he redefined the character, he added to the supporting cast, he added all sorts of stuff to how The Flash's powers work. It's pretty exciting. And I, because I don't know it that well, I relied on my friends DJ and Chris to help me figure out what tropes are we likely to find in any given issue. I'll link to them in the description, but here's what all of us came up with. This is what you could expect to find in any given issue. A focus on the legacy of the Flash, with Flash being mentored or mentoring another speedster. A supporting cast of several super speedsters. 
mentioning the speed force, the source of the Flash's speed. A rogues villain gathering. Linda and Flash being separated or reunited. Time travel or a character from another time. Flash or Impulse acting impulsively. A villain working at being rehabilitated. A caption towards the beginning saying, I'm Wally West. I'm the Flash, the fastest man alive. Introducing new speedster characters in addition to using existing ones. Wally West entering the speed force itself and exploring how it worked. Wally being able to exit the speed force or time travel due to his love for Linda. I decided to read Flash issue 108. It's the introduction of the supervillain Savitar, uh, an evil speedster, and supposedly he'll be used in this upcoming season of The Flash. So I thought Mark Wade's introduction of the villain would be a pretty cool starting place for us. Uh, I'm going to be reading it on the Comixology app. I'm about 50-50 as to how much I like this app. I, I like its depth. And I think its pricing for older issues is pretty fair. You can get some pretty good deals. So it's nice to be able to access something that's older that you might not easily be able to find in a store. That said, the interface is very clunky. You have to go to the Comixology website, buy it, and then download it onto your app in order to read it. So, it, it's, it's not smooth, it's kind of clunky. I like the old version before Amazon bought it, where you could just buy the comics directly through the app. Anyway, let's read. The story begins in the recent past in some old gothic castle, lightning striking, inside are some acolytes. Who are they? Well, that's the mystery. But all of a sudden, there's this laughing madman. We're going to meet him pretty soon, but this is actually Savitar. He's an evil speedster that has a lot more going for him than just the ability to run fast. He sort of worships uh, the, the, the power that gives all these speedsters their speed, and he's learned how to use it in new creative ways. Savitar counts as a new speedster. So, first trope. Now we cut to a montage in the present of three different characters. There's Jesse Quick going on a date. Jay Garrick looking for something in his closet, and two Russian super speedsters that have pulled off some sort of a heist. And the reason we're following them is we realize that all of them suddenly lose their super speed. These are all speedsters. A supporting cast of speedsters. When Mark Wade wrote this comic, the Flash was not the only speedster. He had all sorts of other super fast allies and enemies. It was pretty cool. We finally catch up with our main character, Wally West. At this point in time, he's the third person to be the Flash, and he was the main character throughout Mark Wade's run. Uh, and, as you can see in his very first panel, he says, I'm Wally West. I'm the Flash, the fastest man alive. That intro caption was in every issue. It's how it always started out. And, if you watch the CW TV show, you'd know that they've adapted it, and the intro involves Barry Allen's version of The Flash saying, I'm Barry Allen, I'm The Flash, the fastest man alive. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, this came out in a time when comics didn't usually have a first page recap of whatever's going on in the title at that time. You didn't need it. You just had little editor's notes saying, see issue 100, see issue 56, read this other comic to understand that. I love those little editor's notes. I miss them. I feel like you don't get to see that as much. Wally's having lunch with his girlfriend Linda, when suddenly some super fast ninjas attack, and only Barry can see them initially because of his abilities as the Flash. He knocks out the ninjas, and as he's questioning them for answers, He's joined by Jay Garrick and Jesse Quick, who we met earlier. Why are they there? They're here to tell the Flash that they're not fast anymore. And in fact, Jesse's pretty angry, and she thinks that it's the Flash's fault. She makes the accusation that Wally, because he's now in touch with the Speed Force, is sort of mainlining that, that power, and she thinks he's sucking it away from other speedsters. Don't know if she's right, but that's the accusation. It's also a mention of the speed force. 
before Mark Wade invented the Speed Force, these super speed suits all just got their speed from various things like chemicals or secret formulas, stuff like that. But Mark Wade introduced a mythology layer on top of that that said that there's this other dimensional energy, which is almost sentient in a way, called the speed force. And their various accidents were really just a way for these specific characters to get in touch and access the speed force. Uh, and it also allowed the Flash to start using his powers in new ways. That probably should have been a trope. But anyway, let's keep reading. First mention of the Speed Force. That's a trope. The story cuts to a diner where yet another speedster, this guy's name is Johnny Quick and he's Jesse's father, is meeting someone and we don't get to see who and they talk about all sorts of trouble that's coming. Now, why does this mysterious person seem to know what's coming in the future? Uh, it's revealed that it's Iris West, and she has spent some time in the far future. So she has some knowledge of what's to come, including, basically, the stuff that Savitar and his men are able to do in terms of sucking the speed out of other speedsters. She hints at it in sort of an oblique way. Johnny doesn't really believe her, but when he tries to leave, he finds that his speed has left him. Nevertheless, this is yet another trope. Time travel. Time travel's always been a big thing in The Flash, and uh, never more so than when Mark Wade was writing the book. Back at the restaurant, The Flash grabs one of those ninjas, runs up to the top of a building, holds him over the ledge, typical superhero stuff, really. <laughs> That's almost any superhero's trope. And, uh, you know, who are you? What, what are you doing here? And the guy is scared, so he reveals that uh, Savitar has taken the speed away from the lesser speedsters and granted it to his agents, of which he is one. Now, before he can reveal any more, he's hit with a burst of energy and suddenly he just ages to dust instantly. So that's Savitar sucking the power right away from his own people. Dangerous guy. Jay, Jesse, and Wally all realize that the little bit that they do know from this now-dead ninja is that they're going after students of the speed, we'll call them. Uh, and that would include Impulse, another speedster. Uh, they know that he's in danger, so they run off to warn him. Uh, that said, this is definitely an instance of the legacy of the Flash, because uh, Impulse is from the future. He's actually... Barry Allen's, what, grandson? I, or grandnephew? I, I gotta read more of this. I'm sorry, he's a relative from the future, so that's more time travel too. Anyway, he will basically just sort of continue that legacy of The Flash. Not only that, they also mention Max Mercury. He's sort of a mentor uh, to a lot of these speedsters. He's an older speedster. He specifically mentors Jesse a lot. They mention him as well. Legacy. And you know what? At a certain point, if you have a trope in every issue, maybe it stops becoming a trope. Maybe that becomes the theme. Because I think that that is the theme of Mark Waid's Flash run, is legacy. It really cemented what the Flash was about. That this mantle of heroism was larger than any one man. That there has always been and always will be a Flash. I don't know where I fall in terms of this is a trope and this is a theme. I suppose I would say that a trope is slightly closer to a personal cliché in the sense that we're talking about. Something to think about. Now we cut back to that castle and Savitar is beating on a tied up prisoner. And that tied up prisoner is revealed to be Max Mercury. The reason Savitar is mad is because he blames Max Mercury for spreading the speed force to other people, informing them what it is and, and allowing them to get in touch with it. He feels that that's diluting the, the pool and that it's, it's wrong. As I said, he sort of views the speed force on an almost religious level. So, he's super mad and it ends with him saying, but you know what, you introduced me to the speed force so I'm not gonna kill you and he orders one of his ninjas to. Does he? you got to keep reading this story yourself to find out. 
The story ends with Wally, Jay, and Jesse running to tell Impulse about the impending danger. And uh, the reason that Jesse and Jay are able to run fast again is that uh, Wally has this new ability to sort of imbue moving objects with the speed force. But it also slows him down a little bit when he does that. And he's like complaining that they're only running at Mach 10. And the story ends with Wally saying, well, Impulse has one thing in his favor, it's that he's got a secret identity, so maybe they haven't been able to find him yet. But it ends with a cliffhanger showing that, uh, yeah, Impulse is surrounded by a bunch of ninjas. That's only an introduction to an eight-part story called Dead Heat. It starts right there in issue 108. Pretty fun stuff. Uh, these tropes, they're all cool, to, in my opinion. This is good stuff. Um, I don't love this art, but there were a series of different artists, and some of them were much more exciting than others. Uh, among the best was definitely Mike Waringo. Definitely miss that guy. He was, a, he was a fantastic, fantastic artist. This isn't bad, it's just not my personal favorite, but you know what? Like, that's so subjective as to what's good, what's great, what you like. Uh, anyway, The Flash is awesome. And until next week, strange. Let's see who that is.